some fireworks happening today. I hope it sounds good like that. I've never tried that before. Oh, another lovely day. It's winter. It's winter and it's dry. Melbourne weather, it never stops changing. It's always changing. Oh, oh look at that. Oh man. Oh, you stupid birds. They sit on a power line here and then they just Oh, I can't believe this. Oh man, I gotta wash that off before it gets into the paint. <gasps> Stupid birds. I wasn't planning to drive this car today. Today? There's so many keys, man. Wow. Look at this. I never get tired of starting this car. Uh, yeah, so... Let me give it a quick start. Oh, oh and why, what's going on here? Old cars. Here we go. Flat screen. What do you call this little thing? DVD player. Satellite navigation all in there. Uh, might take it for a drive a little bit in a little bit. But first, I just want to go out and have a look at the, the um, my other car, which I haven't posted much information on. It's been a while. Oh boy. Quick spray with the hose. doesn't hurt just to give it a quick rinse and then I'll give it a quick wipe over stop the holes just a quick clean I've got everything here that I need so there we go maybe I'll use this one here just a quick clean nothing too fancy The thing, was, the thing is with uh, body paint, with car paint, you don't want to let this stuff sit in too much. You don't want to let bird pool sit on your body paint too long because there's acids, there's acids in this paint. I mean, sorry, there's acids in the, in the, um, in the urine and all the acids will start to eat your paint if you just leave it there for too long and I don't want that I don't want to be painting this car for a long time as long as I can avoid it now I almost got everything off but there's still some really dry marks still left in there I'm gonna leave that I'm gonna let it soak for a little bit I'll come back to that to use it's like a glove it's very good for washing cars like a mop put this thing away because I'm gonna take you down gonna go and see the Audi I haven't posted the Audi video for a long time like my Audi has been sitting there for ages 
I've been enjoying the Mercedes Benz way too much. Um, so I figured today I'm just going to at least give it a start for the Audi fans, I guess. Um, it's been way too long, so we're going to go and do that now. I'll let the paint, um, I'll let the water soak into the paint for a little bit longer. Tie this thing up a bit. Tie it up nice and tight. Give it a bit of a rev. Sounds all right. Sounds all right. So, let me take you down to the other car. Since I have it posted for a long time, I might actually leave that unlocked. Uh, maybe I'll lock it. Nah, leave it unlocked. Yeah, so. Let's take a walk down to the uh, the other side. Yeah, that's why I haven't posted them as the um, Audi videos for a while because I've just been in, I've just been enjoying driving the Mercedes Benz so much, uh, and I'm now I'm afraid that the the Audi it just won't start. You know, I'm I'm pretty sure the last time I. Started I tried to start it, the battery was a little bit flat. It just started and that was about three weeks ago. No, that was two weeks ago. And here it is there. Uh, so today I'm going to try and start it. But instead of, just, instead of just starting it, you know, with a flat battery, I'm thinking I might actually give it a jump start. And the good thing is my... Uh, car is right next to my work car and with the re press the remote control here I can get in there oh I can normally get in there here we go here we go I might actually yeah I'll definitely jump start it I've got a portable jump start pack, jumper pack here I'm gonna put there. I'm gonna open up the Audi. Uh, I hope it's still alive. If it's got enough battery, it would open automatically. Yep, it's got power. I'm starting to miss this car just a little bit actually. Oh, there I am. Hello, everybody. been a real long time so I'm really really hesitant on, hesitant on what's gonna happen uh, so the, the reason why I'm not even gonna attempt to start the car without a jumper pack on there is that I, I of course I know the battery is gonna be flat the battery should be flat after so long it was weak already when I stopped driving it and I believe that battery is probably not the best anymore I've had it for two years and it just hasn't been that strong, I feel. An alternator is charging low, a little bit on the lower side. Not extremely, but just a little bit. So I think I need to fix that just by replacing it. I'm gonna do that. And there's, uh, there's my jumper cable. So this is just gonna be a quick post, just to let you know, that, you know what's happening with this car. It's been a while. So yeah, the reason why I'm not just gonna start it is that I know it's flat, a little bit flat, and it probably will not start. Find the positive on this thing, which is, where is the positive? There should be a mark. Yep, this is positive. I can see the mark underneath all the connections. And then, so you do the positive first. And then you connect the negative to the ground of your vehicle. <clears throat> Find a nice clean metal part, such as the, the hook, you know, the engine lifting hook. A clean, unpainted surface. That one's not the best. I don't think that's going to be a good enough one. I'm going to find a better one. 
I'm gonna go down here. It's a much cleaner one. Right down there is a little boat. I'm gonna get that little boat right there. That's it, right there. So positive to the battery, negative to the ground. That is the textbook way of doing it. And then right down here, this tool here, the good thing about it, I use this one for my work quite a lot. With all my, uh, our members uh, or clients' cars. Just plug this straight in there. And to do so, it's gonna be a bit tricky. I'm gonna have to put my leg at the back of it. Oh, come on. Just plug it in like so. <clears throat> yeah, so that's plugged in. Make sure it's nice and tight. This side here, this connection here, this socket, it's for um, actually um, charging it up. The vehicle's got a, a little cable that actually runs from the alternator of the car, from the front somehow, and it connects into the jumper pack. So when I'm driving along, there it is right there. It just connects into the um, battery pack, and there you go, voila. It's charged now. I'm gonna go in there, give this car a crank, and this will make sure or ensure that I will actually start the car. Because if you don't do that, you will have issues. Sometimes you can have false um, ECU codes or engine management codes that will actually, you know, it will cause the car to run a little bit funny. And since this car has already got a problem, it doesn't run all that good, that's why I haven't been driving it. I'm too afraid to drive it much long. There we go. I'm afraid to drive it too much. Wow. Two or three weeks of being, you know, sitting here for that long. Starts up, sounds good. big deal it just clips in it's just held in by just a bit of pressure same as on the other side no big deal uh, I've actually got a video I'm gonna put out a video very soon I did actually did some work on this car I changed the blower valve but I haven't actually released that video yet. I changed the block valve type. Or maybe I have released it already, or maybe I haven't. I'm not sure which, in which order you're watching these videos. It might be after or before. So, now it's running. I'm just gonna remove this thing. Don't need that anymore. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to show you the voltage on this thing, on this um, alternator. Let's see 
what's the voltage on this thing right now? Now, that is the lowest I've actually ever seen this voltage charge from the alternator. This is, it's never been this low before. So I've definitely got an issue with this uh, alternator. I'm gonna have to replace it. There's no way that this car can run this, there's no way this car can run well with the alternate with the voltage char, um, alternator charge or alternator output of 12.4 volts. It can't run correctly. It shouldn't be running correctly. Now I'm starting to wonder if all my issues are all along. I've just been alternator and I've been searching so many different things, but I've got new oxygen sensors ready to be put in because the engine just will not run correctly it's just all over the place I'm just changing so many things and I've got one more expense one more expense which is this thing here and it's in a tight spot as well if you have a look I might be able to get it out without removing too many things then I might be able to get a gap here just have to take off this holes here this you know and that one and just push this out of the way I think that might fix it that might help me a lot um, and then uh, oh man that means I have to buy another one oh hang on we've gone up a bit now 13 oh 13.2 so I was expecting it to be in the 13 volt range so I was very surprised I'm very surprised that it went down to 12 before. That could be because the battery is very flat. <clears throat> but yeah, it's coming up a little bit, but 13.6 is where I would expect it to be, or 13.7. That's where it was after it had already warmed up. And right now it's at 13.5-ish, 13 point, 13 13.6, yeah. And it will probably sit around. Oh man, look at that! It just dropped suddenly. No. Uh, yeah. So the the key with alternators is that they can fool you. I've seen it many times on the road because I'm a roadside mechanic, emergency roadside assist. It can fool you because it might look like it's charging, but let it run, let it warm up for a while, even half an hour, 15 minutes, half an hour, whatever, just take it for a drive or let it idle. That voltage, after it warms up, the alternator, alternator can overheat. Maybe the bearings inside are bad or some components in, inside are bad and the voltage will start to drop. Or the other problem could be that it's low from the very beginning and it stays low. The other thing it could be that happens is that oh man look at the plane. Oh it's so noisy around here. What's going on today? I think that was a police. That was a police chopper. Ah, oh, let me see if I can catch that. Is my camera good enough to catch that? Let's see. Ah, oh, too late. Anyway, I think that was a police helicopter. The other, the other symptom that it can show is that the, old, the, the voltage can fluctuate between high and low, high and low. And if it does, if there's too much variation, like what it's doing right now, it's going from 12 point, somewhere in the 12, 12 and a half volt range, oh, to about 13 and a half. That's one volt variation. That's way too much. So it, those are the symptoms of symptoms of a bad alternator so definitely there's something wrong here so I've got so much homework to do on this car that it's not even funny anymore I've got so many things so many parts to replace it's just not funny anymore you know right the back here I use this car for work so every now and then I can have this thing working Take a look at that exhaust. I know some of you like the, the sound of the exhaust, so here you go. Hopefully it puts a smile on your face. Doesn't smell healthy though. 
<laughs> oh. yeah, there you go. The last time I was working, I was drinking water. Just throw in the back my water container. I carry spare water with me. Oh, wow, two bottles of water. Mm, must have been very thirsty. So I'm gonna need this car for work again next week. Actually, this week, midweek. I've got a, another business that I do on the side, and that is uh, window cleaning. I window clean my own little business that I, I have and you know still manage to do in between all my other roadside assist work these are the blades the cleaning tools all right anyway so back to the vehicle parts in here I've got two oxygen sensors that need to be that I want to replace on the car I don't know if it needs them but I thought I'll just get them just in case. So everything's gonna be new, as, as far as I can make it anyway. Um, I got a, a um, indicator, indicator lens to replace as well. I've got a cracked indicator lens at the front. I haven't done that. I've got to polish the headlights. I haven't done that. So yeah, I've got a bit of homework and I'm sure there's more things in here that I can't even remember. I think there's something in here too. What is this one? Oh yeah, that's right. Oxygen, uh, what is the airflow meter? Airflow meter, you know, by Tridon. Part number TAF050. That's what they gave me. I hope it's the correct one. Uh, so there's quite a bit of homework here, quite a bit. And uh, with this, with this part, actually, this is I've already. This is the second-hand one. This is the one that came off the car. I've already changed that, so I don't need to change that. That's just a, you know the box remaining there to show you the car, the part number. But I still got to do the oxygen sensors. So here we go. Let's check that voltage on this thing. See how it's going. Man, it's not getting any better. It's not getting any better. Oh. Okay. 12.6. So there you go. So this is a quick update on the vehicle here. The Audi S3. For those guys that are waiting for me to post another video on the S3, sorry about that, it's taking a long time, but you know, life is like that. Can't have everything. And I've been really busy with work. Been busy with work and um, I've been enjoying the Mercedes Benz so much, just taking it for cruises and stuff and fixing that as well. I've been I've done some work on that one. I need to do a video on that one as well. On what I've, you know, on an update on what I've done on the Mercedes. Oh, just too many, too many, uh, too many projects, and I probably cannot do all of them. There we go. Now the other thing I notice in here is that the lights in the display here they they actually dimming when I when I give it a rev. you can't see that but with my with a naked eye you can actually see them dimming up and down on a, like you know the alternator is definitely not charging enough so I just uh, I hope that's what the problem is with this car I'm gonna get that changed I'm very sure now I've been thinking about it all week and now I've retested it I'm 100% sure the alternator is broken I'm gonna give it a quick uh, quick fang around the uh, around the block yeah, it's pretty messy in here. I'm, I'm even embarrassed to show you what's actually what it looks like in here because look, the floor. I've got paper on the floor. I've got invoices. It's getting dark now, so it's starting to become hard to see. That's an invoice book there. I've got invoices again. You know, receipt invoices. So I definitely, um, it's a very multi-purpose car. I'm gonna give it a good 
clean out the whole body is actually very dirty i haven't washed this thing for ages so it's got six speed six gears on the gearbox on the stick there I'm just gonna do a whole video of just cleaning this car. I'm gonna celebrate if I can fix it as well. I've got some, I've got some ideas of what I wanna do to this car just to, you know, just for fun. Um, and I can't wait to get there and start playing around with this car some more because it's been a while for sure. a good sound that's for sure bad right now I must say I'm, I'm surprised it's driving this well I was expecting it to be much worse it normally coughs and splatters and you know carries on but yeah it's been good so far it's not too bad temperature like the temperature is already at 90 degrees Celsius on the scale there on the gauge so it should be able to handle some boost but you don't want to overdo it because the tuning is off and that voltage being so low that that could mess it up so I don't want to risk that I've already blown one engine so far I blew up the um, Toyota Supra for those that used to watch my videos in the beginning I started I started with the Toyota Supra I blew that engine up I'm still fixing it it's been months it's been many many months I hope to have the Supra back on the road again in summer but for now it's just the Mercedes Benz and the Audi to contend with and a couple of other little you know other projects that I'm running I haven't even shown you the other cars that I've got because of just time and oh this car it's just very hard sometimes to get the video out you know so I've got too many cars can't do them all wow that's a nice sounded okay there that's third gear right there like it's I'm in third gear it's a very talky engine. I'm very surprised with this little car. It's, it's a 1.8, but it drives like it's a 2.3, maybe even more. Like it just got so much torque. It's just some. It feels like it's a lot bigger. That's one thing I really did notice in this car. It feels a lot bigger than what it is, engine-wise. Power just got torque. So the turbo that's on this car, I'm sure it's a, is designed to produce torque climbed up that hill like it's just nothing. Ooh, ooh, I thought I was gonna stall there. Yeah? Ooh, that was close. Far away from home too. It's got a good sound, that's for sure. I'm gonna stick the camera outside and see what it sounds like. I just don't want to stall it this far away from home otherwise I'll be walking all the way back home to get the jumper pack and that's not going to be nice I haven't got the shoes for it right now like this is a hill I'm going uphill and it just takes off obviously it's not going to it's not going to the new Audis like the S3s and the RS3s it's not gonna beat those ones without a tune but it does feel good for its size I don't know I would like to see this car up against an S3 
I would like to see how far it gets beaten. I've, I've seen an RS3 on the road and it does go pretty quick. This cannot beat an RS3. I've tried it. But an S3, that would be something to see. I'd like to see that. I really would like to see that. Got some fireworks happening today. Wow. I hope it sounds good like that. I've never tried that before. See you later. See you folks.